Before the video begins, I'd like to give a shout out and thank you to the people on screen for supporting me on Patreon. Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to some more Sega GT Part 7 and in this part we are going to be continuing where we left off with the Works Cup. Now moving over to the A class. So this is where it's going to start getting a little bit lengthy. In fact, I believe this is the longest track of the group because the A class race is at Night Section A. And again, we're going to be doing our usual stuff of going from top to bottom, which means that STI is the first to go up. You get $4,000 for pole position, which isn't actually too bad, but again, just to keep it moving, I'm just going to be getting right into it. And then 10000 for winning, which is also pretty good. So the Subaru car is, of course, it's going to be impressive. It makes a decent amount of power, 447, which is very, very nice. We're going to put some soft tires on it and downforce, crank that up so we can get as much handling ability as possible. So, with that, let's... Oh, hang on. I just almost forgot that. Now, let's get right into it and see just exactly what we're going to be going against. Should be interesting. Alright, so... there, Here is our Impreza. It's actually the Cusco Advan Impreza that was running in JGTC during the 99 season because all the... Because, you know, that Taruno wasn't just, uh, was basically, you know, a sign of what was to come in terms of JGT, in terms of JGTC. There's even a couple more there, but we all pass them because, you know, we're fast. And, whoa! Okay. That happened. Uh, just, just, it just decided to get, uh, very messy, I guess. Just, uh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just shrug it off. We'll just pretend that, we just pretend that didn't happen. So yeah, as you can kind of tell, this is where this is where the game really starts to kind of show its uh, hand, big handling flaw because it's just it's really just this is it gets very carried away with uh, this kind of thing where it's just all the bumps and everything and just all like the kind of stability thing where you're usually just fighting with the handling and it's. You know, it's it's very it's really irritating because you shouldn't expect a game to like look at this section here. Just you see how much it's jittering about. Like how how else am I supposed to be able to tackle that section there? Or without the car just you know pl plummeting right into the wall. It's so it's such a handful and it's just makes it generally unfun. But it's really, it's just worth doing this because you get all the money and the cars, and so it's like a nice head start to the game if you haven't, if you decide to do these first, like I have. So, you know. So, yeah, four lap race, beca because again, like as I mentioned before, every class you go up as another lap. So. This one is the long, this one, ironically though, is the longest, because despite the fact that the essay class is five laps, the track that you actually go for that one is one of, is a track that can be done in under a minute, so. Whereas here, the track, whereas here, that's not so much the case. Like, because even on a really good flying lap, you're gonna, it's gonna be a really big challenge to get this done in under, under a minute. Which actually kind of really, kind of, I, the more I think about it, a lot of, pretty much just about every track in the game is rather short in this game. There's, this is, this and, this and, uh, the other night section are really the only tracks that, with the really fast cars, might, would probably still take over a minute to fit, to finish. That's never, some, something I never really thought of. I mean, you can at least get kind of close with this. That was a 1 minute 10.8. Which is a pretty damn good lap, but and maybe with like some of the really high-end like cars that can easily do 200, and say it's like a four-wheel drive one that's like really stable and doesn't really snap loose or anything, it could be possible. But I don't know. Of course, all that really matters though is that even despite all the the, the things you gotta just kind of keep in mind with this car, once you get it down, it's. It's mostly for it's uh mostly rewarding when you can get a, a really good time out of it. But yeah, you can just see there just how much it bounces and wobbles and just gets so unstable. It's just I'm um, just who at WoW was like 
programming this game looked at like this section here and thought, yeah, that's what how that's what race cars do, right? It just does. It just you know, just to me, it does. It just generally doesn't make a lot of sense. So you know. Could this one be a one, sub 110? I don't know. Actually, I think it might be. Yeah, it is. 1098. The whole second knocked off there. Nice. So we at least can get sub 110 here around here with a, with a car like this, which is nice. Oh, man. This thing just Whenever it does that, it just... I really have to be careful. Because just... If you're not on it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to throw you off, and you're just when you least expect it, and it's just gonna, you know, be a bit of a hassle. Alright, just come on, just ease up now, car, ease up. Alright, perfect. But yeah, we're, at least the good thing is, despite all this, the, the car is at least, when you get a really good run in here, even with something like that, you can at least have a very good chance of building up enough of a lead to uh, quite easily run away with it, so... Oh my god, just, did you see that there? The front end of the car lifted up and pretty much was ready to take me to the wall. That's not how that should be working in an area like that. Like, yeah. This is, like I said, like when you get the really powerful cars, this is just when the handling section of this game really starts to come become more of a problem. So there we go. It took about five minutes to do, so... This is this is going to be a part that goes for over half an hour with all five uh, six cars, excuse me. But we get ten thousand dollars for winning, and we get that Cusco Adv Advan Impreza now in our garage. Very nice. And with that, let's move over to the next one, which is TRD. At, again, night section A, and yep, it is an MR2. Can you guess which one? Well, if the if the Impreza was anything to go by, you might already know. So it looks like with the turbo boost, this thing makes exactly 400 horsepower, which is interesting. Not quite as much as the uh, Impreza, but I suspect that it, the car is probably not going to weigh as much, so it might not matter uh, in uh, in comparison sakes. So, let's just do that. There we go. So, believe it or not, this is actually the second go with this one, for, with Toyota. It is, the car we, that we are using is actually the Momocourse Apex MR2, the car that won the 1999 uh, Japanese Grand Touring Championship in the GT300 class, if I remember correctly. Not that you would know it from driving it in this game, because holy crap, this car ranks probably amongst one of the worst handling vehicles in the entire game. It is, it is super, super unstable. It easily wants to get into a big slide, and any sort of bump it takes t sends the car into an into another direction. It is just so unbearably, unbearably unstable. It's that you have that the the kind of momentum that you you should normally be able to take many of the many of the the tracks and corners and many of the track the corners and whatnot in this game with some of the other vehicles like even the Impreza for comparison and that thing's a bit a bit loose too. The MR2 just kind of amplifies that by like 10,000. It, it is such an uncontrollable mess of a vehicle. Like, so despite the fact that I would normally be able to punch it and just get really far ahead of the competition, I have to play it a lot more safer be just because this car is so much more unstable. It's just such a mess. Like at, le at least this time around, compared to my first run, I'm 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 currently in. I currently managed to keep the car from really having a huge disaster, so I'm in first place. But fuck, this thing just this thing puts gives you way more work than you would ever need to expect, especially out of a race car like this. A race car that none not that not even that won its cha won the championship in its class. Like, oh, oh man, like, oh my, just look at that. That That's just a little small section there that that has, like, a, that's, like, the game thinks is, like, really bumpy and everything, and it just sends the car all sorts of loose, my god. See, look at that. 
nearly got taken all the way completely to the left. Alright, downhill section, and I'm not even going to really give it much of any throttle. Especially because look at the... Oh, Jesus. I gave it just the tiniest bit at the end there because I thought I was in the clear. Nope. Like, at least I've got... At least this is a second run, so I'm, I'm kind of more predicting what the car is going to do in some cases, but it is still so... It's just so bad. And the wor and you want to know the worst part of all of this is? Like, as bad as this car is to drive, there's still a car worse than this. Not even joking. <laughs> uh, that's, that will come later. In fact, I believe it's going to be in the next part. But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, I am just going to try and get this damn thing to the finish line without killing my self in the process and losing my out on my chances of first place especially now that I've uh, admittedly built a pretty decent lead here most mostly, mostly because I've mo been able to prevent the car from ha from getting like really stuck at the wall or crashing but just it's it shouldn't be this much work to have to do so I'm glad that the say I'm glad that fucking Sega GT 2002 slash online didn't have this weird kind of handling physics. In fact, the handling physics in that game are fantastic, really good. It's just a shame that this game what was not didn't have similar handling physics to that. But whatever. It, and it, it it is in my opinion still one of the reasons why this game kind of faltered to Grand Turismo. I, I don't think even if the handling was better, if every even if the handling was comparable to Gran Turismo, if everything else was to remain the same, I don't think this game still would have stood a chance. But at least I think some people might have looked at it a bit more favorably. It's still an interesting game nonetheless, don't get me wrong, but... Just... The amount of... Work... I'm putting into this thing... It's just crazy. I'm actually amazed I did that corner pretty well there. I most I think at this point because I'm so far ahead I'm, I'm willing to give it a bit more. Go! Oh my God! Look at that! Look at that! Just that is all it took to get the car to spin out. I am so glad I have built that lead because otherwise I could have. If I was only barely ahead, I probably would have lost it. Let's. I'm just gonna get the car home now. Oh. Worst part is that would have been my best lap had it not been in, uh, in this car, had it not been for that, but yeah. Oh, I was only about just under 10 seconds off the time I did with the Impreza, but still, what a mess. Anyways, at least the good news is we got it done, and the car is at least in our garage, so we can at least look at it and mention about it how it's like a pretty like MR2 race car. No, the chances of me getting back into this car for a race in this game is uh, it's probably not going to happen. Let's be honest. Maybe Nismo will uh, give us some better luck with its uh, Sylvia. In fact, since you probably, well, I'll I'll mention I guess when it loads. There we go. This car makes about one horsepower more than the MR2, but does make more torque. I'm just hoping. <laughs> Because I actually honestly don't remember how the Sylvia drives. If the Sylvia is at least better, I think it will. I think, I think when it comes to handling vehicles, if memory does serve me correctly, the MR2 is easily the worst. But we'll see. Ugh. Sorry, it's just sometimes when I when the passion really gets there, I can really start building myself up with things. That, w that was a big mistake to shift to second there. I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, here's another uh, GT300 car. The Zanavi Art Arta Silva. Uh, I cannot English. The Zanavi Arta Silvia. There we go. That's how to... And right away, I can already tell this thing handles way, way better than the MR2. In fact, I would actually say it's probably even better, slightly better than that in Pretza. I mean, it gets a little bit slippy, but it's mostly 
well balanced and it's kind of easy to really push it. It's kind of easy to really push this car. See, in fact, coming off of that little section there, always just when it come when it's like the slight downhill, it, it always destabilizes the MR2 and usually gets you sent into a wall. Not with the Sylvia. The Sylvia does not have this issue. Holy crap! The fucking violent reaction there. I just fucking gunned it because I felt like I wasn't gonna spin the car out, and I, you know what? I was right. This thing is so much better to drive, though. It's it's like night and day in comparison to that MR2. In fact, there, the first lap, which was a standing lap, and I had a botched start, was still a faster lap than uh, than I did with the uh, MR2 and any of the laps. To be fair, that last lap could have been better than that, but, you know, I had spun, so. Okay, well, there is a moment, I guess that there is a moment where you can play it a bit too rough, as I just discovered there, but, eh, it didn't really, wasn't really anything particularly too bad there, so. Oh, boy. Gotta, just gotta be careful. Whoa, 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 okay. Whoa. Just hold the phone there. How was that even possible? I, I don't even know how that is supposed to work or why, but, you know. <laughs> oh, this game is so weird sometimes. Oil Park, I just noticed a sign up there. What? What is Oil Park? Is it just a park full of oil? No! Well, I guess I got... I guess I can get too carried away in, in the car like this. And here's me thinking I wasn't gonna make... I wasn't gonna be able to do that much at all. Turns out I'm a complete idiot. Let's try this camera view and see how I get on. Maybe it might be... Maybe it might turn out better. Who knows? Alright. I'm just noticing my phone. All the, like, the Discord little pop-ups are coming up constant. I don't know what... How, what... For, for what... Um, it's probably just my phone being behind with alerts, which it tends to... Ha which tends to happen quite a lot, for whatever reason. But, you know. Yeah, just... Yeah, it's just something... It's just Yeah, something I also noted, by the way, in terms of this camera view. Uh, I never actually realized this until I went back to play those versions. The Europe... The... The North American and Japanese versions, when you start a race, it defaults to this camera view. Like, when it, in fact, it's most noticeable when, like, the camera pans down. Like, it doesn't do, like, this to move up, to move the camera up. Like, when it, when it, like, fully rot when it fully rotates down, it just stop. It, it basically gets to this view and just stops. Whereas in, 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 in the other releases, it's like, whoop, in this release, it's like, whoop, before the countdown. Just a very minor change, and I'm never, not sure what exactly the idea was to change it, but, mm, whatever. I do generally prefer this camera view anyway, so maybe that was the idea that maybe Euro the Euro gamers might like this one a bit more. I have no idea, I'm just speculating. I'm gonna have to check my phones. I'm gonna have to check my phone after uh, recording after I've done recording this part. I gotta see what why I'm getting so many Discord pop ups on there. So yeah. I will. I guess I'll have to be honest. I probably would would be closer to getting, perhaps beating my fastest lap if I didn't have so many screw ups. But whatever. It's not a big deal. It's still a very good car. I would say, best best of the three I've been in so far. Though for whatever reason, it always seems to have a problem with this spot here. Suddenly, either that or I'm just playing it like an idiot because I'm basically going full speed ahead and I probably should stop doing that. It's just, you know. And yet, despite all of that, the total time was better. Cool. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, you know. So there we go. There is the third of them. And I, as if I remember correctly, I believe... Those are the only JGTC cars in uh, this class. They have, the, uh, the bottom three are not uh, JGTC cars. But fair enough. So, with that, we're going to move over to Mugen. 
which would be the Integra. Now, that would probably, of course, mean that there is not going to be any turbo or to do it. Nope. We're just going to give it the usual deal of tires and downforce. In fact, if I if I actually think about it, this car might actually handle fairly decently because I think, you know, it's a front-wheel drive car. So it actually might not have too much of a problem here. It, I think it, what will really just depend is exactly how much power is it going to have and exactly how much of it's going to be very useful for the for this race here. I mean, I'm sure I'm not I'm going to have no problem no problem getting through this, so but you know. But yeah, the Mugen Integra very simple in design. Just another kind of Mugen scheme like the Civic. But um you know, works well for this car at least. Excuse me. Ugh, excuse me. Okay. And with that, we are through that, through that area there. Which means we can power on ahead. Yeah, it definitely seems like the Integra probably has a lower top end. Because it's definitely not getting to the same... Uh, speed as the other cars, but it's very well balanced. Very, in fact, probably the best so far. Better than the Sylvia. It really doesn't slip out, and it kind of handles the bumps very well. I would say this is definitely the best handling one so far, just because it's so it's so simple and doesn't try to get itself in a huge pickle. So, you know, despite, I would say, despite the, uh, despite the disadvantage on power, as it definitely seems, this thing at least, def this thing at least has this ability to kind of make up for that, so it's not particularly something that's, uh, of a huge loss in this case. At least, at least to me. Consider, it just, when you consider how the AI gets on with, uh, their, with the vehicles and whatnot, so... Having the better handling means you'll have an easier time getting around the track here, so... So, let's just, uh... Oh, another thing I found out, too, about this game. I actually had already known about it, but I was never sure of exactly... Exactly what? Uh, the, uh... Now, the Japanese version of this game has, uh... Dreamcast version. Has, um... Four exclusive, uh... Karo Zeria body... Carozeria bodies. I think that's actually. I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Carozeria. There's someone. There was someone who put a comment on how it's supposed to be pronounced, and that's my attempt at trying to say it. Carozeria, Carozeria, and whatnot. So. And uh, you know, basically, the whole thing with that is you have like all the different body styles and whatnot. I will, of course, show off the all pretty much all, as many as I can once I get through. Th as I continue to play through the game and whatnot, so, but, uh, and, it's, but yeah, I had known that there were like, some bo there were some bodies that were exclusive to the Japanese version. I was never quite sure what exactly those ones particularly were. That was until I found a copy of the Jap a Japanese copy of the game and was able to download a save for the Japanese version, so I could find out which it was a save that had everything unlocked, so the bodies were there. Uh, there's four bodies. One is called the Basica, the B A S I C A, and it's basic. It's 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 a main design is actually a classic Mini Cooper, which was a bit surprising to see it excluded from other releases. Now the truth is, in the North American European versions, the the data for those for those cars are still in the game, so there's no and there's no like there's no issue as to um th there isn't any issue as to uh, getting them to sh show up. It's just the game doesn't give you the option to purchase it yourself, so you would need to have a converted save or to debate, which is actually very easy to do with Sega GT, uh, or you would just need to, or you would need to, uh, you would just need to transfer the cars from a save from a save that has those vehicles. It basically, you know, Japanese and North American versions can work with this game with this version, and but. North American version would work up to a certain point with the European cars. There are actually some of the European exclusive cars in the North American games files, but 
they're not normally accessible because you know they were they they weren't entirely completed yet, and I don't know exactly how many of them uh, are there. I I know of two Mercedes Benz, and that's it. And then the Japanese version, I probably like you probably work fine with the North American version, but the European version would just fucking like. I think I tried that. It basically just corrupts the whole thing. Everything just becomes a white Mitsubishi Topo. Which is, I think, very amusing. I also found out that there's a Mitsubishi Mini, Mitsubishi Mini Cab in this game. And I have no idea how you're supposed to unlock that. Maybe I'll find out as I play through the game, through this LP, but I never knew about that. That is very interesting. And look at that, a sub five minute run with the Integra. That's just how good this car is, despite its lower top end. So there we go, ten grand, and there's the Integra. Might actually, might actually have to see what I can use this for throughout playing the game, because it's quite a nice, quite a nice car to drive, I would say. That just leaves us with Mazda Speed and Rally Art. So let's get Mazda Speed out next, because well, they're next up. And again, it's going to be an MX-5 for Miata or Roadster, because you know. That's what we use for the license, and in this case, it doesn't change. The only one so far ha that had changed is the Truno. Because uh, in in the B license, you do drive a Truno, an AE-111, but the works one is the BP Craft Truno. Which would have actually fit in here, but I guess because, you know, they had, they wanted to put the MR2 in as well, They, they that's why they did what they did. Of course, I... I would have just preferred it. They just use the Truno, and that's it, because that MR2 is drives like, well, I've already gone on about it. So the Miata, though the MX-5, the Works Cup variant in this is actually a very interesting one indeed. It's it is the Mazda Speed Miata C uh, C spec. Uh, the C spec, like there was a bunch of different like spec variants of the MX-5 in Japan back in the day. And the C-Spec's like the most interesting of it, because it it basically does a whole lot of visual tweaks to the car's exterior that in a lot of ways kind of makes it more resemble like a Porsche in some front in some cases, especially in the front. So it's very it's like this very odd hybrid of a Miata, but it is still very much a Miata at heart. So it's very it's very weird. Handling wise, I must say this car is pretty good. It's actually uh, kind of it's very similar to the in very similar to the Integra. Actually, it's a little more loose, probably because rear wheel drive and everything. But it's still it's very well composed. Doesn't particularly get into a huge uh, ha huge hassle, and it act and it hit is hitting 140 a bit easier in comparison to the uh, to the to the Integra. This has a better top end. This is actually so yeah. This is actually another pretty decent car to use, I would say, from this cup, because it it sure requires maybe just a little bit of work, as you can see there, but not not too much that it would particularly require someone who's practically uh, eats, sleeps, and drives this game every day, or drives this game, plays this game every day. You know what I mean? I guess I went with drives because you know racing game. Ha <laughs> ha pun. And again, kind of similar to Integra. It's got a six gear, but never really going to have much use of it unless, I guess, you don't put all the downforce on. That's what that's my suspicion of a lot of why of a lot of that when I've been doing it. But I've mostly just been doing it to try and improve the handling. I will. I wouldn't be surprised though if suddenly, like, as I'm doing this, someone in the comments is going to be like, "Actually, the downforce makes it worse. Don't touch that." If in which case, if that's actually true and you know that for a fact. Yeah, I can leave that down below in the comments. But if you don't know and you're just speculating, then I'm probably just going to keep doing it. Because it's that kind of thing is glued in my head because of pretty much every other racing game. Where you increase the downforce, you increase the not only just the stability, but the, the cornering capability of your car. Because it can, ha it can handle the high, the high speed cornering much better. So it just kind of comes naturally for me S to suspect that a game like this would also be just like that. So 
I'm surprised I've only got about a 112 so far with this. Oh, that was a that was an excellent line through there though. This got kind of came in nice and early and was a. Uh, Oh, just a bit too much there. Well, that's going to hurt this lap. If it wasn't for that, that'd probably be the new best lap I would have gotten so far with this car. Whoa, okay. That was a bit unexpected, to say the least. Alright, but it's fine. One more lap to go. And then we should be home free with only one more car to use after that, and... My opinion, probably the one I'm actually kind of most looking forward to. I'm kind of hoping it handles really well. I mean, the, remember, the, I would say the benchmark is still the Integra. At least in terms of uh, the Works Cup for A-Class. So I tried Papa John's Pizza today for the first time since they opened it uh, in my city. Uh, Basic, for those of you curious, Papa John's, you know, one of the biggest American pizza chains is doesn't have the same kind of footing over here. One of the most popular he here in Canada would be Pizza Pizza, which is like, honestly, I don't like their pizza that all that much, to be honest. Everyone in America likes to say, oh, Domino's Pizza is the worst. It tastes like cardboard. I don't know. Pizza Pizza is, to me, tastes a lot more like that kind of cardboard uh, low quality pizza taste. Domino's here actually doesn't, I actually kind of like. Maybe they just make higher quality pizza here than they do in America. I have no idea. But I like their pizza here. Especially their pan pizza. The pan pizza's the best. Though I'm still really jealous at people who have Domino's in the UK. You, you bastards get stuffed crust pizza. I fucking love stuffed crust pizza. And Domino's in the UK has stuffed crust pizza. And Domino's in Canada does not. I am so mad about that. Because I want... I like, I like stuffed crust pizza. Just... Ah! Whatever. Uh, I'll sort of mention it, I guess, a little bit more uh, just after this. Though. But yeah, uh, Miata C-Spec is now ours, and you can see what I mean. It has a lot more of like a, a Porsche design kind of going for it. Very weird, but very cool at the same time, personally. And with that, we just have one more, one more to go, and that is going to be the Lancer. Should this one should be pretty interesting because it's a four, it'll be four wheel drive, so the handling might be very good. It certainly makes power 468, and because it's the Lancer, you can put the turbo on it. So, hooray! And of course, soft tires, and down, put that downforce on to try to help with the handling. And before it's. Like I said earlier, it's the reason why some cars get more unstable, like that MR2. But who knows? Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, though the, the Papa John's, despite being so big in North in the U the U.S., not really that huge in Canada. They've been getting a bit bigger though, and you know they've been opening more locations. I had them first years, a uh, few years back when I was in Edmonton. And um, it was actually pretty good pizza, I thought. I was thinking it's, you know, because I got, I, I, I'm a very simple person. I usually just get cheese and stuff on my pizza because I like it nice and, I like it nice and simple. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cheesy guy in more ways than one. Um, but for me, it's just, I really liked it. Just kind of a nice, simple pizza. And I had one, <coughs> excuse me, when I was in Edmonton. And I remember quite liking it. And when I came home that year, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should find out if there's a Papa John's in where I'm from, and there wasn't. That wasn't until about a year ago, until th when they decided, we're going to build a Papa John's here in Hamilton. And I was like, oh, nice. But And mostly a year went by, and I never tried it until earlier today. So I was thinking, why, why not? Let's, let's finally just go ahead and try it. I got that Toscana 6 G's pizza or whatever. Oh, it's good. It's actually, like, it's a, it's a, in terms of, like, a pizza star rating, it's like a 4 out of 5, I'd say. Not, like, gonna knock your socks off. I mean, the mate, the knock your socks off kind of pizza they usually have where I'm from is a place called Chicago-style pizza, which, where they actually do, like, um, 
where like they're actually really well, really well known for their pizza for being like really high quality and very good, and they kind of have this like pizza lasagna kind of thing, which is really popular, and uh, is known to can is basically so filling that you could basically have a slice a day as a dinner and feel full every time. That's that kind of thing. Really popular over here, as a result. So you know that's kind of like the that's kind of like the gold mine. So of course anything else af after that's not really gonna hold up as well. But you know for for having a Papa John's in my area, it's not bad. I I'd say I I'd have it again, which I know I'm going probably going to because I love pizza. But you know that's I guess that's just kind of how I see it and whatnot. Oh wow. So I've been talking so much about pizza that I kind of not really been saying anything about the car here. This, um, the Lancer's interesting, to say the least. It's a little bit on the loo the wild side in terms of how it handles a more a bit more than I was actually expecting to be fair, but not com not like really terrible or anything. Not like completely unusable. It just it just requires a bit of work. I'd say probably not kind of similar to the. I would say most similar would be like the Sylvia. But a little more manageable because four-wheel drive. I just really like my fastest lap. I just pulled there the exact same as what I did with the Impreza, 109.863. That's really ironic. But you know, I'll take it. This lap, though, I think might be a potential uh, best. Oh no! I don't know. I don't know. It's getting a bit loose. Oh no! I think I still got a best flowing in this. It's gonna be a sub 109. Yeah, 1086. So yeah, I would say definitely the Lancer is probably the best. Then, you know, it's it's not the best handling is still the Integra, but in terms of best performance, the Lancer I think takes the cake here. It's just it just it has the edge over something like the Impreza. In this particular regard, and also it, be, be, because it wasn't used in like touring car racing like the uh, Impreza. There's no JGTC variant. If th what they've basically done is they took the Evo 6 and gave it the re basically the kind of same style they've been giving the rest of the rally cars, but which at least in this case works really well because this is very reminiscent of the actual Evo 5 rally car. The Evo 6 was like mostly entirely red and had some white details and whatnot. Whereas this is a bit more, a bit more, uh, kind of, a bit more adventurous in its, uh, wild in its color scheme. But still very nice and simple and quite, quite stylish. And there we go. Another be fastest lap despite all that. 1082 and total record 441. Definitely the best car of the bunch. So it's probably one I'm going to be using, I imagine, for a future thing. Who knows? And there we go. There it is. The work car Lancer Evo 6. And with that, the A class is done. Now, I was, like I've done the previous two parts, I'm just going to quickly run them over in the garage here. Starting, of course, with the Cusco Subaru Impreza. Making 447 horsepower, 397 pound-feet of torque. Weighing about 2,314 pounds. Rear-wheel drive. Despite being a front four-wheel drive car. It's a, But, you know, that's just because of... Uh, uh, touring car specifications and requirements. Moment Course Apex MR2, 400 horsepower, 397 pound-feet of torque, weighing 2,369 pounds, mid-engine three-wheel drive. That probably has a lot to do with why it handles so shit in this game. Zanavier to Sylvia, this one goes back to a front-engine rear-wheel drive configuration, 401 horsepower. Uh, how much torque? Again, 419, so it makes a little more than the horsepower. 2,314 pounds. Now, the Mugen Integra Type R is about... is really down on the power. Only 300... <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, 304 horsepower. Only 209 pound-feet of torque? Really? That's, uh, that seems about... that seems kind of wrong and off. Like, what? Okay, and weighs 2,495 pounds, which is more than I was expecting. Like, th that's really surprising. 
I didn't kind of expect that. MX-5 C-Spec, least powerful. I guess to be fair, it's, you would expect that. 263 horsepower, 202 pound-feet of torque, but only weighs 1,750 pounds, so it's definitely the lightest. Again, front engine rear-wheel drive, and yep, front engine four-wheel drive, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6, 468 horsepower, the most powerful, with 448 pound-feet of torque, weighing 2,134 pounds. This Lancer weighs less than the Integ Integra, that la Lance, uh, what? Okay, um, I guess that's, it's very weird, what, what can you say? But yeah, that's going to do it for this part. Stay tuned for the next part as I'm going to be tackling the last of the Works Cups to do the SA class. Should be the most interesting, I imagine. So, taste, so stay tuned for that, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified when I upload the next part. And make sure to check out my Twitter and follow me on Twitch. Uh, come support the channel on Patreon. I will see you all on the next one.